It's extremely difficult, my dearest Shahrazad, to speak up to you. Always inspiring, you know. You, you can listen to your story thousands of times and the emotions are the same. And um, our obligation is to really avoid cases what, uh, like what happens to you. So we will do our best together with you to, to make um, the world really freer of sepsis. Being completely free is a long um, term and you know it's, it might be too challenging but we can definitely reduce the number substantially. And before uh, moving to the formal presentation, I would like to once, once again acknowledge the presence of our esteemed colleagues and uh, global leaders of global thought, global health thought. Detlev Ganten, who is the founding president of the World Health Summit. Thanks to him, uh, the, this amazing event is happening in Berlin and of the co-founder of the Virchow Foundation. And um, together with Roland Gode, it, this event would not happen without support from Roland and uh, Professor Ganten. Um, even though we've met today, um, uh, honorary Grohe, I know how um, irreplaceable your support was uh, from Professor Reinhardt for the um, development of the first WHO resolution on sepsis. Mm -hmm. And we hope that you can uh, again count on your <laughs> continued support because Germany already proved to be the leader in the sepsis global advocacy. And definitely with the Berlin Declaration, the idea of Berlin Declaration to once again emphasize the geography and the leadership of Germany and Berlin city itself for the further advancement of the, the global sepsis attempt. And I'm extremely uh, happy to also welcome my dearest colleagues from the Unite Parliamentarians Network, the head of health committee of the Moldovian parliament, Adrian Belli, on our room. Thank you, Adrian, for joining us. Irina Kutsenko, my dear friend from Odessa City Parliament. And I mean, despite what Ukraine is currently going through, she's always with us. She's always on the front run of the, the global health agenda. And considering that sepsis increases, the risk of sepsis increases during the armed conflicts, of course, that's another dimension of sepsis to consider. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> We have uh, Honorable, Honorable Badri Fazli, my dear colleague from North Macedonia, joining us. Uh, <laughs> and we have uh, Liliana Tagua, I'm no. sorry. Taki, sorry. <laughs> Our colleague from the Parliament of France. <laughs> so. And with Germany and France sitting around the table, uh, Honorable Alan Donnelly, the chair of the G7, G20 Partnership for Health and the former member of the European Parliament. We, we really hope that we can, again, strengthen the message. Uh, sorry that I cannot reach out to each of you, but of course I cannot leave out our former member of Parliament from Canada, our dear friend from Keith Martin, who is also the uh, founder and executive director of the Global Consortium of Universities in Global Health, so another fantastic dimension that we'll bring in. Um, we will definitely distribute the list of participants because uh, we are extremely honored and um, happy to have such a um, wonderful representation of esteemed colleagues and leaders from civil society, from uh, private sector, um, academia and um, the governments. Of course, I cannot reach out to my dear sister, uh, Eleonore Nwadinobi, the uh, president of the Medical Women's International Association, but we will have the possibility of, of course, exchanging our thoughts. So without further ado, let me briefly go to the Berlin Declaration. It's a formal presentation. Sorry, it may be less uh, impressive, but that's, that's the new roadmap. That's what we need to do. It's a three-pager document that was the outcome document of the latest Central World Sepsis event in Berlin in September. And the document is already endorsed by over 75 international health organizations globally. Urgent call for enforcement of the World Health Assembly resolution, the 2017 resolution that was a huge hope 
for the global sepsis response and reinvigorated global action on sepsis. Renewing global action on sepsis, that's our new roadmap that will be followed by very uh, specific um, and you know, um, detailed um, uh, strategic planning process soon. So the document is three pager, but I will I will walk through the document, so you will not take need more time to go through the, through um, uh, the paper in your uh, folders. So the document, of course, first starts with acknowledging the progress that we've made in the fight against um, sepsis globally, and the World Health Assembly resolution again, thanks to our support from uh, the Honorable Euro uh, in 2017. It was, was a foundational uh, achievement. As of today, at least 16 countries, mostly in high income you know, uh, part of the world, they have prioritized sepsis in their national policies. And you can have the list of countries in the document. Uh, the World Sepsis Declaration, uh, developed by the Global Sepsis Alliance, was endorsed by over 14,000 stakeholders, both individual and in, in, in institutional uh, stakeholders. In 2020, the first major paramount evidence on sepsis global burden became available and published in Lansen and um, Conrad spoke about it from the Institute of Health Metrics and <coughs> Evaluation. The same year, we had the very first global sepsis report from WHO. We have five regional sepsis alliances that brings together over 120 member organizations of the Global Sepsis Alliance. And annually, we're celebrating the World Sepsis Day, again, the movement inspired by the Global Sepsis Alliance and Sepsis Stiftung partnerships. Uh, since 2012. However, against the background and the, the progress, and despite the paramount evidence, sepsis continues to be one of the major global health threats. 20%, one in every fifth death is accountable to sepsis. At least 48.9 million people affected every year and 11 million lives lost among women, children, and uh, men. The latest estimates from the <coughs> Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation even indicates to a higher death toll of 13.7 million deaths every year. It's higher than we, uh, and the, the tragedy is higher every year than we have gone through the pandemic, but unfortunately, Sepsis is not visible, not recognized in the global health architecture and the high level dialogue till today. Um, against the common notion that sepsis is primarily initiated uh, from the infectious disease sources, we have the evidence that almost half of all deaths from sepsis originally were related to the underlying non communicable diseases and injuries. And most of almost 50 million excess deaths during COVID were attributable to sepsis. High economic burden of sepsis, actually, the management of sepsis in the hospital, and uh, Shahrazad spoke about the high, um, extremely high expenses, 2.6% of healthcare budget and 0.33% of the gross national incomes of countries are um, uh, you know, expended for the sepsis management. And even though 0.3% is too low, in terms of the, the country's economies and the GNP proportions, uh, it, it uh, really um, wears a high economic burden. Until today, less than 10%, only 60 countries have prioritized uh, sepsis despite the 2017 WHO resolution. And against the background, realizing that health-related SDGs and the aspirations for universal health care, AMR, and the pandemic uh, accord will not be achieved unless we effectively reinvigorate the sepsis global response. Policymakers rightly prioritizing AMR, and we're delighted that the Global Antibiotic Research and Development Partnership is our partner organization in the second event jointly already, 
We extremely appreciate the decision that AMR is prioritized at high level dialogue and we have the high level meeting at the UN coming up next year. But we have to consistently address and integrate sepsis along with AMR and the infectious prevention policies as the uh, final pathway to death from many infectious diseases, including those untreatable due to AMR. And finally, we are realizing that improved prevention, early detection, and management of sepsis holistically contributes to strengthening of the health systems. So that is definitely the patient-oriented and the intersectoral approach that sepsis provides. So based on the analysis, we have very concrete calls for different stakeholders. First of all, we are repeating, calling again on the UN member states to implement the declared commitments in the 2017 resolution. And those commitments were to include sepsis in national health system strengthening initiatives, both at community and institutional level, to develop standards of care, especially during the health emergencies, and again, Ukraine case, and what we see in the Middle East and Israel today is definitely the clear indications of being prepared during the emergencies. Increasing public awareness, developing training for health professionals, and using term sepsis in communicating with patients, because you would be surprised, till today in many countries, sepsis is not known only to patients, but even the healthcare providers. And promoting research for innovations, we need new solutions in diagnostics, therapeutics, early identification, and definitely vaccines and other new technologies. These commitments are already in the 2017 resolution. We're not speaking anything new, but we're just reminding the UN member states. The same is the reminder to the WHO Director General to ensure the WHO de develops the sepsis guidelines. And this year, Dr. Tedros promised and confirmed that in 2024, WHO will be releasing the, the guidelines on sepsis management. And of course, we, we look forward and we are ready to be um, engaged in the development of, um, of the guidance. WHO to support member states to define standards and establish necessary guidance infrastructure lab capacities and tools and collaborate with other UN and international agencies for quality, safe, efficient and affordable diagnostics and treatment. Again, this is the language from the 2017 resolution. But in addition, we would like to call on key stakeholders and in global health and under the uh, stakeholders. We have identified both the UN member um, states, uh, UN uh, agencies including UNDP, UNFPA, UNICEF, um, uh, and WHO and the World Bank, uh, being multilateral development agencies, mm -hmm. leading public-private partnerships and philanthropies, uh, innovative financing mechanisms, business, academia, civil society and professional associations. What we need to do is to consolidate efforts of public, private, and you know, multiple stakeholders to urgently prioritize sepsis in global health architecture and high-level dialogue. That's why we're extremely grateful to the six co-sponsor agencies, including uh, the Virchow Foundation, Unite, Medical Women, the GARP, Sepsis Stiftung, and the Clinton Health Access Initiative that we managed to have our first side event on the UN General Assembly. And thank you, many of you, for taking part and representing us. Today, we use the opportunity of the World Health Summit to organize this high-level luncheon and to again expand our potential friendships and partnerships. And we will be also discussing G7, G20 opportunities. We urgently need to prioritize development of global and national sepsis strategies and action plans that in synergy with AMR and the broader agenda. Establishing monitoring and reporting mechanisms. There is no monitoring of the implementation of the WHO resolution, so how can we make a progress if we don't measure and if we don't document? And development of the second resolution on sepsis. Building on the hepatitis C global movement experience, they have very much country, uh, benefited from the second resolution that was more specific and measurable. And that is uh, the agenda that we will be pursuing. 
WHO requested WHO to prioritize and synergize policies to recognize World Sepsis Day as the official World Health Days, one of the 14th, increased sustainable funding for sepsis, including from domestic government, international aid, private sector, and um, innovations, prioritizing national coordination mechanisms for uh, the sepsis national policies actions plans, because without country-led coordination systems, it would be impossible to have progress in immunization, HIV, TB, malaria, or other global health um, initiatives and establishment of the global academic network for sepsis to consolidate and disseminate knowledge and innovations. Finally, we call the G7 and G20 leaders to intensify efforts building on the Berlin communique for detection, diagnosis, and therapy of sepsis, synergizing sepsis with antimicrobial stewardship and IPC, and of course, investing, investing, and investing, because it will finally, it will not be a cost, but um, definitely the savings in terms of human and economic burdens. And the declaration, as I mentioned, is already endorsed by 75 international organizations. Each of your organizations are welcomed to undersign the, the document, and the documents are available both on our websites at the um, Global Sepsis Alliance and the Sepsis Stiftung. Thank you very much. Thank you.